If you wanna make a little something that looks like this in your Notion workspace, then you are in the right place, my friend. I've had lots of requests on how to make a notification center in Notion, and I am so excited to dive in today. Custom notification widgets are one of my favorite things to add to a Notion build because sometimes you just want a high level overview of what is going on in your life without having to search for it. Like in my personal life planner, which I will link for you down below, I like to log into Notion for the day and immediately see how many tasks I have to do, what my meal plan is, and if I have any content to post. And you can even add notifications to your already existing databases like I do with the books that I'm reading. Now, creating custom notification widgets like mine takes a little bit more of an advanced knowledge of Notion formulas. So if you missed my last video, take a minute, pause this video and go watch that to get a base level knowledge of Notion formulas and how they work. Hello again. I'm assuming you're back from watching my video on Notion formulas, so now we can start crafting our notification widget. Today, we're going to go over how to display our task count, our overdue task count, and how to add spaces and create headings. By the end of this video, you'll be able to take this knowledge and apply it to any data you wanna display. To start us off today, I have an example task list that I made specifically for this demonstration. There are a few key properties that I have here. One is the done checkbox so that you can mark it when it's finished and the due date over here that of course tells you when to do the task. Since we're going to be looking at tasks that are due today and tasks that are overdue, those are going to be the two main properties we're going to use. However, just know that you can do this with any different type of data. It does not have to be only with due dates and done checkboxes. So the first thing we're going to do to create our notification widget is add a brand new database. You can name this database whatever you want to. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it notification widget. Now we're gonna go over to the database properties and we're going to change the layout to a gallery. Inside these settings over here, we're going to change our card preview to be none. So we just get the blank cards. And then it is totally up to you what size you want. I like to leave mine at medium normally, but large works too. Now we can go ahead and delete these extra cards that it gives us automatically. We're not gonna use those. We only need the one. And then up here in the little name of the view, you can actually just change it to be a single icon by picking your icon and then putting a space in the view name. I also like to go ahead and hide the title just because I don't always wanna be seeing that. And then lastly, we're gonna come over here to the properties and delete these tags that it automatically put on here for us. Okay, now we have our database set up and we can start on our next steps. Let's go ahead and give this card a name. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and call it today's agenda. And just know we have to have a title here. We can't hide it. And if you don't put anything in, it's just gonna say untitled forever. So to actually be able to read our data from other databases, we need to create relation properties. Properties. So I'm going to come in here to our properties, add a new one, new relation property, and then I'm going to relate it to our my tasks database. Now we do want to show this on our tasks database, so I'm just going to go ahead and check that. And totally up to you if you want to rename this part, but I'll just leave it as notification widget for now. Now, if you have lots of different places that you want to pull data from, you need to make relations to all of those different databases. For example, in my personal one, I have it related to my tasks database, my meal planning database, and my content database, and just to name a few. Now, once we've created that relation, we want to actually make sure all of our tasks are related to our today's agenda page right here. If you're setting this up in a brand new database with nothing in it, you don't have to worry about this step. But if you're adding it to an already existing database, you want to connect all those pages together so you can read that previous information. The easiest way to do that is to keep your tasks or whichever database you're using in a table view like this, show your relation property right here, and then add the page that you want to connect and drag it down to connect it to all of our pages. After you do that, you can of course hide this because you don't need to see it anymore. And then what I encourage you to do is to add a filter to your database to make sure that every time you add a new item, it's going to include that page that we want it to be linked to. So all I've done here is filtered this view so that our notification widget relation contains today's page. Optionally, if you use buttons to add new tasks or new items, you can make sure the pages are linked within the button so when you click it, everything is good to go. Or if you use templates in your tasks database right here, 
you can make sure that today's agenda is connected to your template. So every time you add a new task, you're good to go. We want this to be as easy and automated as possible for ourselves. So we're not adding more work. So find the way that's going to be easiest for you to make sure these pages are all linked together when you're creating them. So you don't have to retroactively be linking them together. And then one more thing I like to do is to go into today's agenda right here and make sure that relation we added is shown as a minimal section so we don't have to see all of the tasks that we have linked. Because trust me, you'll get a lot of tasks. Okay, now we have got everything connected and now we can start our formula. This is how we're gonna display our task information in a very nice, easy to read way on our notification center. So what I'm gonna do is open up our today's agenda card here and add a new property. And it's going to be a formula and we'll go ahead and edit that. Now, when I'm displaying things in a notification center like this, I like to use the function let because it lets me store the information from the other database in a little variable and then I can nicely display it. If you are unfamiliar with the let function, be sure to go watch my last video where we talked about it more in depth. So I'm gonna start by adding the let function here. And then just to keep our formatting neat, I'm going to shift enter to open those brackets a little bit for us. Now I am big on commenting and formatting, which I talked about in my last video. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment to make sure that we know what we're doing here. Here, I'm just gonna say we are getting our total tasks for today. Now we're going to define our variable. I'm gonna call this number of today's tasks. And now we actually get to go find that number. In my last video, I also talked about the two ways that you can use functions, one being to type out the function and use the parentheses or use dot function on an item that you're calling. I prefer to use the dot function format. So you're probably gonna see me doing that today just so we are all on the same page. So in order to get the information that we want, we're gonna call the my tasks relation that we set up and then we're going to filter it. So I'm gonna use the dot filter function. And then there's two things that we're gonna filter for. One is that the due date is today. And the other is to make sure we haven't already done that task. So when we call the filter function, you'll see over here on the side, three variables pop up. One is the one that we created right here. So we don't wanna use that one. The other is the index right here. Now, if you remember when you call a relation, Notion automatically makes those into arrays or lists. So as you can see here, our index returns the index of the current item in the list function starting from zero. So if we were wanting to see where something fell within a list, we could use that, but we are going to actually use this current here today, which is basically going to return a list of everything in our relation property. So I'll choose current, and then we're gonna filter by due date, which populates for us right here. But date properties in Notion include both the date and the time. So we want to set the format to be only the date to make sure that it captures the entire day's worth of tasks. So I'm gonna use the format date function and use the format called L, which is a predefined format that is going to give us the date in month, day, year. So now we have pulled the due date and formatted it to be month, day, year. And now we want to make sure that that due date is equal to today. So I'm gonna say equals, and again, I'm gonna use format date. We will format the date now, again, as L. So now we've filtered out all the due dates that are today. We also want to make sure that we're only grabbing tasks that aren't done. So I'm gonna create a second filter here by typing and. Again, we're gonna call current, and this time we're gonna get the done property. And we want them undone, so where the checkbox is false. Okay, so now we have filtered out by due date and whether or not it is done. The last function we're gonna use here is the length function. And that's just gonna give us the number of tasks that match that filter that we created. Okay, the hard part is done now. We can move on to displaying our information. So below that, I'm going to make a display area. For this example, I want the statement to read, you have X number of tasks to accomplish today. However, that statement is going to read differently based on how many tasks we have, right? If I have one task, I want it to say one task, not one tasks. So because there is a little bit of funky grammar there, we're gonna actually use an if statement. I'm gonna type out our if statement here. And now remember, we need to make a true and false statement and write what happens if it's true and what happens if it's false. So to condense this down into one truth statement, I'm gonna have it look to see whether our variable we created, number of today tasks, is greater than one or less than one. So that way our statement is going to read for zero or multiple tasks. And now I want our statement to say, you have X number of tasks 
tasks to accomplish today. And then specifically for one task, I want our statement to say the same thing, but only one task instead of plural. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that guy and take out the S. Okay, there's our formula. Let's go ahead and see how it reads. There we go. It says you have two tasks to accomplish today. And if we go and look at our due dates, you can see we do have two that are due today. Now to show that in our notification center, we can go ahead and come to our properties and just unhide that formula. We should probably name it though. Let's see. Display today's tasks. Okay, so what about overdue tasks? Luckily, this is going to be super easy because we already did most of the formula in our today's task. So all I'm gonna do is come here and duplicate that property. And I'll go ahead and rename it, display overdue tasks. And now we can come into our formula and edit it. Now there's only a few things we actually need to change here. One, I'm gonna go ahead and change my comments and my variable name just to make sure it's accurate. So I'll change it to overdue tasks. And then because I changed our variable name up here, we also need to change it down here. Now, instead of looking at our due date and seeing whether it is today or not, we're actually gonna change our equation up here to make it less than, and that's gonna look at any dates that were in the past. Then lastly, I want this to say you have a number of tasks overdue instead of to accomplish today. Okay, and then there we go. Now it says we have three tasks overdue. And if we look down here, we have three tasks that were dated previous to today. Our notification center is looking really good. There are two other things that I wanna show you with it though. One is how to create space. As you can see, our heading is right here and maybe I want there to be a little bit more space between the heading and what it's reading. So if I open up our today's agenda, I can add a property and I'm just gonna add another formula. I'm gonna go ahead and call this space. And then inside the formula, super easy, we're just gonna write quote, space, quote. And that is going to always keep a space right here. And then we can decide where we wanna put it. You are going to have to come in here to the properties though and show it. And then again, we can decide where we wanna put it. So now we have a nice space in between our title and our notifications. Now, if you want to add extra headings, you can do so. We're gonna open up our today's agenda again and add a property. And this time it's going to be a text property. I like to name this whatever my heading is going to be. So if I wanted to say overview, I'll just go ahead and type that in. And then inside the text property here, we're actually going to use KTEX. I talk more about KTEX in my Notion Aesthetics video because it can be used to find some really fun fonts. So if you're curious about KTEX, go ahead and check that video out. Basically, we are going to write a quick line of code that's going to display our header in a fun way. You can make this whatever color you want to, so all you need to do is type the backslash color and then use curly brackets to decide what color you want. In KTEX, you can write the colors out or use hex codes, whichever you would prefer. I'm gonna use brown today just because it's easy to see. And then I'm gonna use another set of curly brackets to type in my heading. Then once you've got your little equation set up, we can go to the front type in two dollar signs, and then go to the back and type in two more dollar signs to get our heading to populate. Now you might not love that font, so I do encourage you to check out the KTEX language and see what options there are. If you want to have something that is not like this, you can come in front of your heading name right here, use another backslash, and type in the type of font you want. One option is MathRM, and that gives you a nice kind of Roman font. Now again, we can put it wherever we want to and I'm gonna do the same thing on our properties. Go ahead and show that and put it above our tasks. And there you go. Now you have a beautiful little notification widget that shows your tasks. Phew, I know that may have been a lot, but now you can take this knowledge and create your own custom notification widget with any data you want to. If you learned something today, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. In my next video, I'm switching gears a bit to talk about what to do if your systems feel crazy right now or if they're non-existent. I'll share my top areas to focus on and where to get started both in and out of Notion. Be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss it. In the meantime, if you're looking for ways to enhance your Notion setup, watch this video on my top tricks for easy navigation in the Notion mobile app. See you soon.